Whenever I listen with Kato, I kept on discovering new details and songs that I've been listening to forever. It generally sent me chills down my spine. Add to that the best of Moondrop's balanced tuning and before you know it, you'll end up listening for hours on end. So let me tell you all the reasons why Kato will amaze you and why this is one of the best IEM you can get. Let's get started. Selamat pagi! Good morning everyone, Kenneth here and welcome to my review of the Moondrop. Should I pronounce it Kato or Kato? I think I'll stick with Kato. But yeah, the format of this video is going to be super simple. It's an IEM review, I'm going to talk about the build quality fit and then finally go in depth about the sound quality, which I hope will give you a good idea of how it sounds. With that said, full disclosure is down in the description below. Basically, rest assured because you are always getting my own honest opinion and please help me support the channel by using the affiliate links below, hit the thumbs up, subscribe, do all the good stuff and yeah. Let's get started with the unboxing. Honestly, Moondrop has done a very good job in creating a nice experience here. And here's a clip from my unboxing video. Let's open the box. We have the QC certificate right there. And let's see. I'll leave the full video link below if you want to watch it. But going through the most important stuff here. First, you get a super nice fall leather case with microfiber lighting on the inside. I use this case all the time. It's big enough to store the earbuds even when I don't roll the cable up perfectly. It could also contain my lightning dongle right here, but that's the limitation because I don't think even smaller USB-C DACs will fit in here. But yeah, this is a hard case, which means I have full confidence that it will protect the earbuds when I put it in my bag or in my pocket and it opens and closes via strong magnet too. It's just great. What's also great is the cable. I like the fact that it's got a transparent coating that shows off the silver plated braided cable inside. And not only that, you also get polished stainless steel on the connector, the splitter, as well as the neck chinch right here. On the earbuds end, you get two pin connectors that has plastic bits going into the earbuds. They say this is to protect the pins from damage, but most importantly, inserting and removing the IEMs are very easy. Easy, unlike the other connector called <coughs> MMCX. <coughs> if I may nitpick, actually the cable is a tad bit on the thicker side, which means the weight may affect how the earbuds fit a little, but we'll talk about this shortly. Overall, the cable feels very sturdy. It's gonna last for years to come. It behaves very well too from day one. And when you bring it out and about, it keeps the rubbing noise to your skin or clothing to a minimum. So you really won't notice them at all when you play any music. Now, moving on to the in-ear monitors, the Kato that I got here is the brushed stainless steel model or what they call matte gray color. You also have the mirror silver option, which is shiny stainless steel that's polished by hand and I think that's amazing. The color resembles the KXXS that comes before it except that it's got a diamond-like pattern on the inner part now. This is present on both the matte and shiny finish and overall I really like how it looks. It's just the earbuds are a bit on the heavier side. I don't think the weight causes any issue with the fit, but instead they make quite a loud impact when the earbuds hit each other if I hold it like this, which happens when I roll it up for storage. Also, when I accidentally bump it to a table or drop it, which I'm really careful not to do, I feel like this will damage the intricate design rather easily and over time, make it look less than perfect, which I already see with my left earpiece here. Anyway, what's not to worry about is the entire nozzle construct that's interchangeable, which presents some real benefits here. One, it adds an element of customization because in the box you have two materials to choose from, brass and stainless steel, although they don't sound different to me, but two, it makes the metal mesh easy to clean. There's no tool needed for removal. I can just unscrew it, blow air from the inside and remove all the unwanted stuff from there. Also, you store these nozzles on a very nice metal plate right here. They even give you a pouch to store this plate. And that's all awesome. Now let's talk about the ear tips, which make or break the fit of the earbuds. And I'm gonna start with their special design called the spring tips here. While they say these plays a part in making the Kato sound as good as it is, these are a bit thin and by design, they don't stick to the ear canal as much. This means they are very comfortable to wear in the long run, but when I start to move and walk around or just hit the cable slightly, I often find the fit to get loose, especially on my left ear. And that is with the largest size provided. 
For those of you who don't know, my left ear is partially at fault here because it also doesn't play well with most earbuds or Halvin ears, probably because the ear canal is slightly larger than my right. So I always feel like it would be amazing if these spring tips come with an even larger size. And I think Moondrop is aware of that though, as they are developing the XL size. But if your ear is not as big as mine, rejoice because these fit very, very well. Again, they're very comfortable. And they are very high quality and they look nice too. Anyway, back to the rest of us big ear peeps. You could always use the memory foam tips here. And these comes in three sizes, good quality stuff. You can clean it from earwax easily. It doesn't stick here and it seals very well too. It's just personally, I'm not a big fan of this tight memory foam tips. So I ended up using the spring tips that gives much less pressure on my ear canal and accepting a little bit of, you know, loosening up from time to time. At least the option is there though. And after you find the perfect fit, you can store everything inside this transparent plastic case, then put it together with the nozzle plate thing inside the small pouch. All right, very shortly, we'll go in depth and do the sound quality. But before that, I want to remind you to hit the thumbs up if you appreciated the video so far. Subscribe if you'd like to see more reviews like this, either wireless or wired stuff. And please use the affiliate links to help me support the channel. So let's start with the sound quality right now. It is very easy to say that Moondrop Kato is one of the best sounding audio gear I have ever tried. And a big part of that is because it introduces an added depth dimension, which creates a sort of layering where instead of vocals in the center and instruments playing around it, you know, theme that I've described all other earbuds up to this date, you can now actually pinpoint where things are placed, whether it's in the far left, near right, front, middle, back, things are distinctly different and precise and add to that a very, very good amount of detail resolution and Akato will just amaze you like all the time. What's even crazier is I get all these good stuff even while only listening with this Apple Lightning to 3.5 mil dongle. For the record, I'm using the lossless quality on Apple Music and do stick around till the end if you want to hear my opinion on DAC and cable upgrades. But for most of the review, I'll be using this basic adapter and leave the Kato untouched to show that even with what you already have, you can get amazing sound out of it. And these are some of my highlights listening to songs in my review playlist. Starting with Enter Sandman by Metallica, the Kato brings a truly balanced sound, avoiding common traps like bass dominating the song or treble being too harsh. Instead, we got to experience one of the closest things to Moondrop's VDSF curve, which translates to sufficient low end that's agile, detailed, and lets the drum and bass create a sense of mystery throughout the song. Then we get a focused mid-range that's always put vocals or guitar solos front and forward, it's full bodied, it's detailed, and that's complemented with crispy treble that brings true to life sounding, open hi-hats and cymbal crashes without ever being piercing. I just can't even start to describe how much better the Kato is compared to the wireless earbuds, any of the wireless earbuds. I thought my EQ on the Sony XM4s was already pretty good. It was close to the Moondrop Aria here, but now they feel like everything is playing on one flat surface. And in comparison, things are much more alive with the Kato, like you add a dimension, like I said. Same thing goes for Brave Shine by Aimer. For the first time, I can really pinpoint where the instruments are coming from. They are, you know, presented with even better detail than before. I can tell the hi-hats on the right side, vocals in the front, there's tom-toms in the left. And the most interesting thing is I can differentiate that there are two different cymbal crashes on the left, while there is only one cymbal crashes on the right. This is a song that I've listened to for as long as I remember, and it feels like I'm listening to it all over again with all these details and it's just mind blowing. Speaking of volume, I always found 50% or one more click above it to be more than enough. And at this volume, The Weeknd by SZA already gives strong sub bass rumble that proves when the music calls for it, the Kato will not disappoint. It's just that on most other songs, usually the bass is on the lighter side. But I just wanted to quickly note that Anything above 60% will be deaf territory here. It is really, really loud and it will be just there in case you bump into some very quiet YouTube video or 
something like that. Now, just for fun, I tried some Dolby Atmos tracks here and the result has been hit or miss depending on how the track is mastered. And that's not Kato's fault because this already has such excellent sound staging and separation, Dolby Atmos sometimes only makes everything more messy. Such is the case with Fearless by Taylor Swift or I Feel It Coming by The Weeknd. These two songs, I'll go with stereo any day of the week. But on the other hand, listening to What's Going On by Marvin Gaye, I actually prefer the Atmos mix here because it brings the guitars, the bass, the drums, these things that are usually tucked away at the back now brought forward in the mix as well as giving more space to the vocals and be less confined in the center basically. Don't get me wrong, the stereo mix already sounds amazing, but I just like the Atmos version and it plays very well in Akato. This is one of the few excellent Atmos masters out there and it's just unfortunate that these are quite rare to find actually. If you'd like to learn more about Dolby Atmos, I'll leave my explanation video down below, but that's pretty much wraps up my sound quality review. Basically, whatever genre you're listening to, the Kato will give a natural and balanced sound, bringing out the smallest detail and you will notice these things without even trying. It really sounds that good, and it is only the start. Down the line, you can change the cable to a balanced one. Moondrop has one called the Line K that goes for 50 bucks. Or for me, I tried my friend's The Audio EST. I paired it with his Fio BTR5 and only then I noticed a huge jump in the sound staging, but not so much of an upgrade with these built-in cable that's unbalanced plugged into that Fio BTR5. I also tried his iFi hip DAC too, and I'm telling you, while the soundstage isn't as wide there, the bass boost feature is so good, it's almost addictive. I really think that DAC is just entirely worth it by that bass boost alone. Also, from the same friend who seemingly has everything here, I've compared the Moondrop Kato to his Moondrop Blessing 2, which is a super nice 4BA and 1 dynamic driver setup. Naturally, I found the Blessing 2 to resolve even more detail and get even more wider as a sound stage compared to Kato, but there's something about this single dynamic driver in Kato that makes the whole music sound more natural, you know, like more cohesive compared to the technically accurate balanced armatures, but less well-rounded in a way. I don't know how to describe it. But all in all, I haven't listened long enough to tell you all the details and give you a clear conclusion, but one thing is clear here. At this point, it is only a matter of preference. Both the Kato and the Blessing 2 will impress just about anyone who listens to it. And so it's good to try one out to see which sound you like best before you invest in one because these things don't come cheap. And so yeah, let me know what you think of the Moondrop Kato. For me, it is just as stunning today as it was when I first unboxed it. And I hope it will amaze you just as much when you decide to buy one. All right, that's gonna be it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Kenneth. I'll see you in the next one.